Hello there. Welcome to my review of the 1968 film Danger Diabolic, starring John Philip Law as Diabolic, Marissa Mel as his love interest Eva Kant, Adolfo Celli as villain Ralph Valmont, and Michelle Pickley as Inspector Ginko, and featuring Terry Thomas as a government minister. It was directed by Mario Bava, and here's the spoiler-free review. Danger Diabolic is an odd film that seems to defy opinion almost 50-50 between loving it and hating it. I happen to love it. It's a campy Italian-made film with some English-speaking actors and it was shot in English but the dialogue is all dubbed on after the fact as was the style for Italian films at the time. It appears to be set in the UK but the currency used is American dollars and it's quite clearly filmed in Italy. I think this mishmash of cultures and the very stylistic way some of the film is shot can be off-putting to some, but if you can accept the world you're parachuted into, it becomes much more enjoyable. It's a sort of satire, sort of spoof of the early Bond films, and is played for comedy, although some of the jokes don't quite land due to the overdubbing and the editing. The set design, though, is incredible. the sort of sets Ken Adam used to do in those early Bond films. There are a lot of kitsch 60s filming techniques used that do look a little dated today, but the action scenes are thrilling. The performances are all just a little arch. Uh, they walk that fine line between hammy and tongue-in-cheek, particularly Terry Thomas. He is certainly not going to make a fool of me. You might recognise some scenes as the Beastie Boys use this film as the basis for their body moving video. I would recommend this film as nothing but the best. Now, on to spoilers. So the film starts with an elaborate money heist, completed by anti-hero Diabolic, who takes his loot back to his girlfriend Eva at his overly elaborate lair. There's a joke here, where as he goes to put the money in his safe, he pauses and it cuts to Inspector Ginko being chewed out by the minister for allowing the crime to happen and Ginko says Diabolic won't simply launder the money he will do something far cleverer. At this point we cut back to Diabolic making love to Eva on the big pile of money um, suggesting that he's not doing anything clever with it. It's not the greatest joke in the world but it's also a little lost due to the dubbing and the cuts not quite working. Most of the humour lands much better than this, but it's a shame that on first viewing, this tone-setting scene doesn't quite come off. It is obvious to the logical and well-trained mind that the first thing that Diabolic is going to do is to get those dollars out of the country. Logical suggestion, sir. Mm. <laughs> but I'm afraid quite useless. What? Diabolic will handle the $10 million, but in some quite different way. What quite some different way? A way no mind but his could imagine. Ah, uh, no. As I mentioned, the sets look incredible. A combination of matte paintings and real sets on a huge scale with the very coolest of 60s chic. Some of the miniature work isn't great, but it's possible that might be intentional. More likely it's because Barber managed to make the film for $400,000 rather than the $3 million budget he'd been given. The cheapest of these scenes is when Diabolic blows up the tax offices, something which Fight Club would repeat with slightly more realistic FX uh, many years later. The film is based on an Italian comic strip, 
in a similar anti-establishment vein to Fantomas or Modesty Blaze, um, all of whom were hugely popular in Europe in the 60s. Uh, I would argue that in this film, at least, uh, Diabolic, despite being a criminal, is actually a more likeable character than James Bond. He's deeply in love and completely monogamous with Eva, and while the government is willing to work with organised crime in order to catch him, he works alone with his own moral compass. He doesn't revel in one-liners when he's forced to kill someone, and doesn't really say much at all. Most of his performance comes via his eyebrows. There isn't a huge amount to the plot. Diabolic steals things, and the police try to stop him in ever more elaborate ways, leading Diabolic to use even more elaborate ways to steal from under their noses, including a daring climb up a vertical tower, all dressed in white. The car chases look great and are all really well shot, and it's a shame that they never made any more, especially with the cliffhanger ending, where Diabolic is presumably killed after he is encased in molten gold, for reasons that are evident when you watch the film, trapping him like those flies in Jurassic Park. Uh, because of this, the police allow Eva to see him one last time to mourn, at which point, thanks to his fireproof suit, he winks at her, and the film ends with his laugh echoing throughout his lair. <laughs> It's a very imaginative, creative film that uses every penny of its incredibly small budget, and I enjoyed it immensely. If you're a fan of camp 1960s kitsch, then you should enjoy it too. Thank you. Goodbye. That one man can make a fool of the entire police force, but a laughing stock in the world press and our own newspapers are screaming for action. And that is precisely what I intend giving them. Vigorous, clear-sighted, 